ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا <تصفيق> يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speech is the book of allah وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and the best guidance is the guidance of our beloved messenger muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها and the worst of affairs are those things when you be invent into this religion of ours وكل محدثة بدعة and everything when you be invent into this religion of ours is an innovation وكل بدعة ضلالة and every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray وكل ضلالة في النار every going astray every misguidance is in the hellfire ثم أما بعد my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we commonly question ourselves in this life by asking why or how come. And as Muslims, we should know better than to ask this because our lives, our souls, our possessions, everything belongs to Allah. And Allah stated this clearly when He said, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. That to Allah we belong and to Him we will return. That He is the owner of the heavens and the earth and what is between them. So I came upon some questions or statements that in dealing with the people you hear fellow Muslims say, but Allah has provided the answers for those questions. So we should remind ourselves, myself and you, so that we realize that Allah in His own world, words reveal to the Prophet wasallam the answer to all things. And if you believe, then you should accept it as you should believe in Al-Qadr. Because part of your Iman is أَن تُؤْمِن بِالْقَدْرِ خَيْرِهِ وَشَرِّهِ That you believe in Al-Qadr, the divine decree and the pre-decree of Allah. The good and the bad of it. That Allah knows what's going to happen to the end of time. And that He decrees everything for you. And His knowledge, His decree is better than what you want for yourself. So these are Allah's words and the guidance to Jannah. So if you believe in them, then these answers should be sufficient. Commonly we'll ask, why am I tested? Why is Allah testing me? I'm fasting, I'm praying, I go to the masjid. I pay my zakat. Why am I being tested? Allah says, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَنْ يُتْرَكُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّ وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلِيَعْنَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْنَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ Allah answered, why you would even question Allah, why am I being tested? Allah said in the Qur'an, what means? Do men think that you're going to be left alone? Do you think you're going to be left alone to say, I believe and that you will not be tested? Allah said, we did test those before them and Allah will certainly know those who are true from those who are false. All of life is a test. Life and death is a test to find out who of you will be best in deeds. You think it's enough to say, I believe, and you'll go to Jannah? Maybe some other religions, but not the true religion, the one religion. As we said on the day, we read, in Allah, in the deen, in Allah, in Islam, that the religion with Allah is Al Islam. It always has been. All of the Anbiya were Muslim. So this has always been the case before, now, for the future, that the one deen with Allah is Al Islam, and testing to see who is better indeed is part of. Our, our life that Allah chose for us. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He said, مَنْ يُرَدُ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرْ يُسْدْ مِنْهُ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He said in an authentic hadith, whoever Allah wants good for, He tests him or tests her. So these tests are a trial, because Allah wants good for you. Allah wants you to respond to increasing your iman. We ask, or the people ask, I never get what I want. I don't get what I ask for. And although we give that khutbah from time to time again, why our du'a may not be accepted that we know the Qur'an, we don't follow it. We know the sunnah, but we abandon it. We know Jannah exists, but we don't work to get it. We know Jahannam is blazing, but we're not doing what it takes to stay away from it. We're not thankful for our food that Allah provides us with, and the likes of these matters. But you may ask yourself, why I never get what I want? Well, did not Allah say, وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَقْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Did Allah not answer this? If you ever doubt, why did I not get this? Why did I not? I wanted it, why did I not get it? I asked Allah for it, why did I not get it? Allah, He says, what means it is possible that you dislike a thing which is good for you. And it's possible that you may love a thing, but it's going to be bad or evil for you. Allah knows and you do not know. Allah knows and you do not know. Some things that we want could end up being a source of misguidance, taking, away, taking us away from Allah and His pleasure. Some things we don't want may be a source of what guides us and brings us closer to Allah. And I can guarantee every one of us has experienced this at least some point of our life. Wanting something so bad, not getting it, being sad and frustrated, and seeing the good that came out of it. And the opposite is true. We always ask, why am I being burdened? I can't take this struggle. This is too much for me to bear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He answered this. He said, لَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا وَسْعَهَا لَهَا مَا كَسَبَتْ وَعَلَيْهَا مَا كَسَبَتْ Allah, He answered it very clearly in Surah Al-Baqarah, where He said, what means Allah does not place a burden to a soul greater than it can bear. It gets every good that it earns and it suffers every ill that it earns. If you are faced with something, then Allah thinks you're capable of it. And He wants to see what you're going to do. Are you going to resort to haram? Are you going to resort to evil? Are you going to resort to abandoning Allah and His deen? Or are you going to turn to Allah? Beg Him for help. Be patient with what He decrees because you know who a khayrul makirin, He's the best of planners. So when you ask yourself, or when you reflect, why am I being burdened this way? Know that Allah does not put a burden on anybody greater than they can bear. <coughs> these trials that we go through, these tests, they're not always a punishment. But to the believer, they're a way to cleanse you of your sins, raise you in ranks, make you higher in your level of Jannah that you would have been if you were not tried with these things. Remember the hadith that we commonly mention that some of Bani Adam will be continued to be tried and tested, tried and tested, till they meet Allah with no sins. So where do you want to struggle? In this dunya, where you know what's going to end? Or on Yom Al-Qiyamah, Yom Al-Kana Mithdaruhu Khamsina al Fasana, the day that's 50,000 years long, and the people, Yafirru, Min Akhi, Wa Ummihi Wa Abi, Wa Sahibatihi Wa Bani, when you'll run from your brother and your sister, your mother, your father, your children and your spouses, You'll throw anyone in the fire to save your neck that day. You want to have an easier day, you take those trials here and you take them with patience. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى Indeed, with every hardship, with every difficulty and hardship, there is relief. Repeated verily, with every difficulty and hardship, there is relief. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, know that the believer, he takes this, these affairs, عَجَبًا لَأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ إِنْ أَصَابَهُمْ كُلَّهُ خَيْرٍ فَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدًا إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ إِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ صَرَّاءَ شَكَرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرٌ لَهُ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ ضَرَّاءَ صَبَرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرٌ لَهُ Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said in an authentic hadith, what means, amazing is that fear of the believer. Whatever happens to them, they're always looking at it as khair, as goodness. If Allah touches him with something good, he doesn't pat himself on the back and get arrogant and proud thinking that good came his way by his own hands. He thanks Allah, he praises Allah, he turns to Allah, he increases in worship of Allah. But when he's tried with hardship, when he's tried with difficulty, sabara fakana khayra lahu, he's patient. He accepts what Allah wanted for him. 
because he knows that Allah is the best of all planets. The sad fact, my brothers and sisters in Islam, is that we complain so much about tests, even though they might be minor, or even the tests that might be large, but we know that there are others who are struggling way more, suffering way more, hungry way more, ill or sick way more, going through tests and trials that wouldn't even be a scratch on the skin to us, but when the things happen to us in a much minor fashion, we complain. There are some who lose their children, and we complain when we lose $20. There are some who go through great tests of illness, medication, struggle. It's cleansing them of their sins. And some of us complain when we have the slightest headache or cold. Allah's Messenger وسلم, in the Sahih Ibn Majah, and Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Anzuru ila man huwa asfila minkum wa la tanziru ila man huwa fawqakum fa innahu ajdaru an la tazdaru ni'matallahi alaykum Ruwahu ibn Majah wa hadha hadithun sahih The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said When you look, when you compare look at those who are below you look at those with less We say this hadith often These are one of those hadiths that you should put on your mirror in your restroom or, or put it in your car or put it somewhere on your fridge. Because if you could implement this hadith, you're halfway to success. When you compare, when you look at looking at your life to those below you, those who have more illness, less family, less loved ones, less wealth, less trials, less difficulty. When you look at that, and Allah has given us an ummah where that is very clear to many of us, who are people who are struggling day in and day out across the Muslim lands. When you compare, when you look at your, look at those below you. You might be complaining about the meal that's on the table that day, but there are some who are scraping through rubble of broken down buildings, looking for crumbs and eating it. Some who are looking for water mixed with mud to drink it, to quench their thirst. And we have the oh, that's No, man, I drink Arrowhead. I don't like Crystal Geyser. It's the truth. I want to describe it a different way. I don't like this sauce. I, don't, I get it. But how thankful are we being to Allah if we're complaining and looking at what other people have that are above us? So the Prophet he said, look at those below you, not those above you. Don't look at those with more money, more children, more food, more property, more wealth, more whatever. Look at those below you. Why? So you do not belittle the favors and blessings Allah has given you. Because we started the Eid Khutbah with that ayah. وَإِن تَعُدُّ نَعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تَحْسُوهَا If you were to count and enumerate the blessings of Allah, you ain't gonna come close. You won't come close to enumerating all the blessings Allah has given you. We constantly ask or we ponder, stating I'm losing hope or that I'm hopeless. And you hear the Muslims say this, that I'm hopeless. Allah, He said, وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Allah answered you. Ain't no such thing as hopeless for you. As a Muslim, Allah said, do not lose heart, nor fall into despair, for you will be superior if you're true in faith. إِنَّ وَعْدَ اللَّهِ حَقٍ When Allah promises something, it's the truth. It's the truth. So He said, do not lose hope, do not lose heart. Do not fall into despair, for you will be superior if you're true in faith. Remember, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم, الدنيا سجن المؤمن وجنة الكافر. This dunya is a prison for the believer. Experience hardship here. It will be better for you in the next life. This dunya is a prison for the believer because Jannah compared to this place, you can't even compare. كما قال الله عز وجل في الحديث القدسي. أعددت لعباد الصالحين ما لا عين رأت ولا أذن سمعت ولا خطر على قلب بشر as Allah said in the hadith Qudsi which is authentic from the Prophet Sallallahu where he said I have prepared for my righteous servants what no eye has seen what no ear has heard and what can't even occur to the human heart this is place is the slums compared to Jannah even the nicest and the prettiest of the areas so this was the promise of Allah do not lose hope do not say I'm hopeless do not fall into despair. You're going to be superior one day if you stay upon Tawheed and you stick to the Aqidah of the Salaf al Salih, the Aqidah of our righteous predecessors. We always ask, how can I face this? Where am I going to get the strength to deal with this? Allah said 
يا ايها الذين امنوا اصبروا وصابروا ورابطوا واتقوا الله لعلكم تفلحون الله said in the Quran in the surah al imran O you who believe again when you hear ya ayyuhal ladina amanu if you want to be a believer with Allah because we can't say we're the believers Allah has to give us that title yawm al qiyamah may Allah give us that title then we will be successful O you who believe hear this get ready because you need to implement it endure endure hold fast be more patient be patient be more patient and guard your territory by stationing the army units permanently at the places where the enemy can attack you and fear Allah so that you may be successful. So not even in the cases of war, endure, be patient. Be more patient, fear Allah, and you will be successful. That's your prescription to success and to happiness. Allah said, وَاسْتَعِينُ بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ Allah says, we need to seek help with patience and prayer. You try and tell the people this when you're in a calamity and they don't want to hear it. Yeah, I do, I do, I'm patient, I'm praying. You ain't. Allah he said, seek help. Help yourself with sabr, with patience and prayer. With patience, being calm. Sabr in the sadmat al-ula. Patience is at the first stroke of calamity. It doesn't mean you ain't going to be sad. It doesn't mean you ain't going to cry. It doesn't mean that you're not going to feel remorse. It doesn't mean that you're not going to be in a state of depression or anxiety and the likes of these matters. It doesn't mean that your heart is not going to be hurting or broken. This is not sabr. Yeah, I mean, to say it's not, you're, it's not that you're not patient if you do those things. But it's accepting Allah's decree and praising Him. Even in times of difficulty and hardship. And prayer, seek help with that prayer. That sajda aqrabu ma yakunu al-abna rabbihi wa huwa sadiq fa'akthur du'a. The prayer, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, was writing the sajda, the one that so many of us, we rush and pray so fast because we don't want to have our face on the ground. He said, the closest the servant is to me, to my pleasure, to my help, to my assistance, right, to my aid, to my support, is when they're in sajda, to akhtar dua. Take time in your sajda. Make dua to Allah. Ask Him while you're in that position the lowest place that you're standing on the earth at the time, and he is فوق السماوات السبع, فوق عرشه. He is above the seven heavens and the earth, above his throne, separate from his creation, but he can hear you, even though you're down on this carpet. Turn to Allah. Seek help with patience and prayer. Truly, it is extremely heavy and hard, except on the khashi'un, the true believers in Allah, who obey Allah with full submission and fear Him and His punishment, and believe in His promise of Jannah, and take heed of all his warnings. Allah said, Allah bi Allahi tatma'in al qulub." With the remembrance of Allah will the hearts find rest. You're struggling with something. The question was, how can I face this, deal with this difficulty, this struggle? Many people get impatient. I want a quicker fix. So they'll go and take out a rib alone. Or they'll go and gamble. Or they'll go and drink alcohol. Or they'll go and do intoxicants. Or they'll go and hang out with the... the the homies, or do whatever they got to do. Anything to get them away, because they, they think that's going to be the solution. Allah said, with the remembrance of Allah, will the hearts find rest. Saying, Alhamdulillah, tamla'u mizan, it fills the scales. Saying, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, tamla'u or tamla'u ma bayna samawati wa love. Saying, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, they fill what is between the heavens and the earth. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. That there's no power or might except with Allah. This is a treasure in Kunuz and Jannah from the treasures of Jannah. You're telling me if you really believe in Allah and you say those things, it won't bring peace to your heart? That's where the temper, that's where the permanent peace will come from. All those other haram things, shaitan is waving in your face, wanting you to try it, saying, This is a hey, come here, come this way, this will solve your problems. And we go after it, ignoring that one ayah. Indeed, with the remembrance of Allah, will the hearts find rest. We always ask, what do I get from all these trials? What am I getting from all these tests? I'm going through all of this. Where is it going to get me? Allah Azza wa Jalla said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ اشْتَرَى مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَنْفُسُهُمْ وَأَمْوَالَهُمْ بِأَنَّ لَهُمُ الْجَنَّةِ Allah gave us the answer. Allah indeed has purchased from the believers their lives and their properties in exchange for that they will have the garden of paradise to live in and to dwell in. For eternity, forever. You've sold your life to Allah for Jannah. So you live this life the best you can, knowing it's temporary, knowing that it can end. 
You can be a baby, you can be nine years old, you can be 16, you can be like a couple of brothers just driving in a car, may Allah have mercy on their souls, just a few days ago in the Dublin area, young men, quote unquote, life in front of them, but Allah wrote something different for them. And the two brothers lost their lives. We don't decide when we go. Allah decides when we go. So how do I deal with this? Where will it get me? Allah just said it. You can trade your life and your wealth for Jannah forever. Who wants it? Who's ready to give it? The one who wants Jannah sells and gives his life and his wealth to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this doesn't mean you go take your own life away. You give all your wealth away. It's not what is asked of you. It's that you're living in a path that Allah will be pleased with. May Allah make us all from those who live in that way. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, many times as Muslims we're slipping into this un-Islamic type of way of questioning Allah with why, why me, why this trial, why do I have to go through it? I can't bear this. I'm hopeless. And the likes of these matters. When Allah, He gave us the remedy for each one of those things in the Qur'an or on the tongue of His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Khatim Al-Anbiya al the final seal of all the Prophets and the Messengers. Go back to those things. Because yes, life can be tough. Yes, there can be a lot of bumps in the road. Yes, some waves can come and crash you out till you're under that wave. Your arms are flailing, your legs are flailing. You don't know if you're going to come up and survive. But guess what? The promise of Allah is true. Paradise is true. Jahannam, the hellfire is true. And there are the two destinations we can go to when we're done with this life. Where do you want to go? So that's how you put in perspective every question, every trial, every difficulty, every calamity you go through within this life. We ask ourselves to continue upon those questions. Who can I depend on? Who do I rely on? Who's going to help me? And we ask this often because we're looking to mankind for those things. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said, فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا فَقُلْ حَسْبِيَ اللَّهِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُمْ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتْ وَهُوَ رَبُّ الْعَرْشِ الْعَظِيمِ Allah says in the Qur'an what means, but if they turn away from you, in this case he was saying, say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah is sufficient for me. Allah is enough for me. Say this. Hasbi Allah, Allah is sufficient for me, Allah is enough for me. La ilaha illahu. There is no God, no deity, no object of worship, worthy of worship, except for Allah in truth. And He is the only one alone without any partners. Say that. Allah is sufficient for me. La ilaha illahu. In Him I put my trust. In Him I rely. In Him I'm going to fall back on. And He is the Lord of the mighty throne. Allah is all I need. Allah is all you need. He is the true Mawla. He is the true protector and the true friend. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this last portion, this afkar or dua, is at the end of Surah At-Tawbah. It's printed on the back for you to take to memorize this. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, whoever says it seven times in the morning and seven times in the evening, Allah will suffice him with all of his concerns for, from those affairs from this dunya and the akhirah. So make this part of your daily afkar in the morning and the evening. Hasbi Allah. Allah is enough for me. Allah is sufficient for me. Subhanallah. Try it when you're being tried and tested. Just say, Hasbi Allah. La ilaha illallah. Allah is enough for me. I don't need nobody else. I don't need nothing else. My life depends upon what Allah wants it to be. It will work wonders if you really believe it. La ilaha illallah. There is no one worthy of worship in truth but Him. I put my trust and reliance upon Him. And He is the Lord of the Magnificent Throne. If you haven't memorized it, if you're not saying it seven times in the morning and in the evening, take that flyer, put it on your fridge, put it in your car, hand it out to family and friends, memorize it, and inshallah will benefit you. And lastly, we ask or we state or we say, I can't take it anymore. I'm done. I'm done. I'm, born, I'm burned out. Can't take it no more. This is too much for me to handle and bear. 
We already said you can respond. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah does not burden a soul greater than with what it can bear. But also look at what Yaqub alayhi salam he said to his sons. يا بنية أذهبوا فتحسسوا من يوسف وأخيه ولا تيأسوا من روح الله إنه لا يأسوا من روح الله إلا القوم الكافرين. He told his sons who had went and thrown Yusuf السلام, into a well and then went to go and get some uh, provisions when there was a famine across the earth. Yaqub, he said, O oh my sons, go you and inquire about Yusuf السلام, and his brother and never give up hope in Allah's mercy. Never give up in Allah's mer- hope for Allah's mercy. Certainly no one despairs of Allah's mercy except the people who disbelieve. When you think Allah cannot be merciful to you, when you think Allah cannot help you, when you think Allah cannot get you through something, you have disbelief. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِ الَّذِينِ أَصْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنْفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَةُ مَنْ رَحْمِتِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الظَّمِّيُّ الْجَمِيعَةِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah says, what means, say, O oh, ibadi. Say, O oh, my slaves who have transgressed against themselves by committing evil deeds and sins, despair not of the mercy of Allah. Verily, Allah forgives all sins. Truly, He is all forgiving and most merciful. So never question or never get to the point where you say, I can't take it anymore. Because again, there's always those who are going through way more. I want to end with this statement that we've mentioned in, in the past, Ibn Qudama, al-Maqdisi, rahimahullah, he advised one of his brothers, he said, أعلم أن من هو في البحر على لوح ليس بأحوج إلى الله وإلى لطفه من من هو في بيته بين أهله وماله Ibn Qudama, he was giving advice to one of his friends, he said no. And when they say أعلم they're telling you, pay strict attention to this. You must know without a, with, with all fact, without a doubt. He said, know that the person in the ocean, on a plank of wood, middle of the ocean, no boats, no life rafts, no side of land, middle of the ocean, by yourself, all you got is a plank of wood. The person in the ocean, on a plank of wood, is no more in need of Allah and His kindness than a person surrounded in his home by his family and his wealth. We don't look at life like that. We think we're at home, nice home, it's got a roof, it's got walls, heater, air conditioner, whatever you're looking for. I'm secure, I got locks on my doors, I'm safe. Uh Uh-uh. A person at home with his family, with his friends, with his wealth, with all that he owns, You are just in need of Allah as a person in the middle of the ocean who's only got a piece of wood to keep him from drowning. This is what he advised him. He said, thus, if you comprehend this in your heart and you place your dependence upon Allah like the dependence of a drowning person who does not know any of any means for safety except Allah. If you comprehend this in your heart, you will turn to Allah even though you're on land even though you're in your home with your family and your wealth and your loved ones and the likes, you will put your trust in Allah just like the person in the middle of an ocean who's got nothing keeping him from drowning but Allah and that piece of wood there. When you grasp this, when you understand this, then you truly rely upon Allah. May Allah make us from those who do not question Him and accept His qadr, the good of it and the bad of it, and from those who fulfill those arkan and iman, those pillars of belief. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والاحياء منهم والاموات انك انت سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين